Hey, it's still good morning, good morning. Facebook didn't give me any garbage about going online this time. So let me get you strapped up here to the tripod. And maybe we can have a little check in. Welcome, 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 welcome. This is Pastor Brian Warner from the Churchtown Church of God. I am uh, having a little Friday here myself, a little down, a little down in the dumpster, a little physically down in the dumpster. This rain, cold weather, the church week, you know, everything. So I'm not going to lie. I never lie to you guys. I'm functional. I'm just not feeling wonderful. Good morning, Rosie. Good morning, everybody. I'm going to move forward today because I have no idea what the time frame is of people who would normally check in live. So we'll go ahead with what we had planned and then we you can check it out later. Mid-afternoon. It's 1130. Um, so yeah, you can check it in later if you want to watch the video on YouTube or you can ch download the podcast uh, and check it all out. But I want to continue this theme because some people have been asking me lots of questions. All right. A few people have been asking me lots of questions about this concept of a Christian having a relationship with evil. And I don't want to get it twisted. It shouldn't be twisted in any way, shape or form. We know evil. It's much like having a relationship with somebody who you know is just awful. You have that relationship with them. You know how to handle them. You know how to treat them. You know when to, how to stay away from them. All of those things. And if they come at you, you know how to defend yourself. That, I mean, that it's not, there's a good analogy. To say to ignore evil And that's how I'm feeling a little bit down this morning. But to ignore evil is just as ridiculous. Now, all throughout scripture, we are taught that we are coexisting with, right? We're taught to come in together as faithful believers and edify one another, sharing the gospel as often as we do so that we may strengthen going into the God's word and understanding more about who God is and all of those things. Thus understanding more about who we are and all of those things. So that we can then go out when we do engage with the world. And if you're engaging with the world, whether it is a straight up, obviously demon possessed, wicked, evil person out to persecute the church or just a lost person wandering around out there by themselves lost in the dark, but never intending to do wicked things to people. That's the world we live in. So we know how to engage. It's like knowing that lost person across the street, and you know they're not a Christian. You know they don't care about being a Christian. They're your friend, and you would very much like them to become a Christian, a child of God, into the kingdom of God. But they're not actively seeking to destroy you as opposed to manifest evil, which is good morning. And so that's where I want to draw the distinction when I say Christians need to understand and grow in understanding and their behaviors regarding their relationship with evil. Now we have a couple of examples here. I'm going to Matthew 13. Father, we pray that your word would go out this day. Because we know that it will not fall to the ground unused. What we sow, we pray that you will reap is the growth of the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you read the Churchtown Weekly, I wrote about this topic. We spoke about it on Tuesday. I wrote about it again. You got it on Thursday. And I used the parable of the wheat and the weeds. And how Christ says, no, 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 you must let them grow up together. Because if you just start wantonly trying to pull weeds without discernment, without God's discernment, without knowledge, without any understanding of 
how the world works, you're just going to end up, what are you going to do if you're going to destroy evil? So does that look like we as Christians walk out and say, you're a lost person and try to destroy that person? That's crazy. So Jesus is teaching us that we live alongside. And when we combine that parable with the parable of the sower, the parable of the seed, right? We know that there is this ongoing dynamic between Christians and, as we say, the world. And we know that sometimes it's going to work out that the word of God touches the human heart and the roots grow deep and sound and an individual is absolutely transformed and becomes a child of God. We know that sometimes it's going to be a shakier, longer journey than that, but there will be success. We know that it will sometimes be a shakier, longer journey than that, and it will not be a success. And we know that as often as not, our preaching and our teaching and our willingness to share the gospel will fall on deaf ears, ears that are closed, eyes that are blind. So Jesus does not, you know, sugarcoat what we do and what we say and, and, and the result. It's not all like, you know, Jesus freaks going out into the world and everything is going to be rosy and rose colored glasses. You know, maybe you want to go and dress up in your hippie, get up and go dance around the fields and all what, go for it, have fun. But that's not the reality of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is firmly implanted in enemy territory. So Jesus teaches us through parables and you look at some of his very direct teachings and prophetic teachings about, you know, we, we talked about if they hate you, remember they hated me first, you will be brought up before the principalities of this world, but do not worry. Two points. One, that's an excellent opportunity to talk about me to people who really need to hear about me. Whoa. Okay. And we see that. We see that in, throughout scripture from Joseph on. And Paul, he's in prison. He's converting all the guards all of that stuff. And two, don't worry about what to say or how to say it. I am with you. And that's not a guarantee. Like I am with you and you're going to have one of those experiences. Like in the books of Acts when, when the, the earthquake will happen and the chains will break and the light will shine and I will walk out. There's no guarantee of that. There is a guarantee that he will never leave us or forsake us regardless of circumstance. And when, when, at the, when the time of persecution comes, there are two things to remember. One, we depend upon him completely by faith. And we do not worry about what to say. He does not need defended by Brian Warner. He will defend himself quite well. Thank you very much. But two, it is an excellent opportunity for me to share the gospel with people who desperately need to hear the gospel. People are always saying, oh, my goodness, the times we live in. Oh, my goodness, the times we live in. These are the times we live in. They're the wicked times that we live in. Yeah. So do you see oppression and you are unwilling to move forward in that oppression? Or do you see a harvest that is ripe? People who are lost, people who are lost, just wandering, and people who are lost, who are actively seeking to harm the image bearers of God and or his bride, the church. From within, because there's so much heretical Christianity today, and it has such a platform through social media. That's what I keep saying about these podcasts that we've come down with and turning on the lights and the YouTube channel. And sharing this, getting, getting, and getting to the YouTube and sharing it and getting, hopefully, what this is decent, orthodox Christian content. Because trust me, if, if, again, I've said it before, like if, we, if it were transvestite Christian story hour, two or three shares and that baby would be all over the Internet. But solid orthodox Christian teaching that's preaching truth, you got to push it. And there's some good stuff out there, but you got to push, 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 push. So that's why I'm saying, if you think it's worthy, share the YouTube video, download the podcast, we all get it out there. So when people 
would just research Christian teaching, something like this would come up. And I know that there are lots of people doing lots of good work, but the, 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 the research, the evidence as <clears throat> all of these social media platforms were put on trial, so to speak, at hearing, shows how they're slanted and what they're slanted toward. And it's not slanted toward Orthodox Christian teaching. Let's just put it that way. <clears throat> so the wheat and the weeds is what I talked about. And I wanted to bring that up and then convert real quickly to the parable of the farmer scattering seed or what we call the, the parable of the seed or the parable of the sower or the parable of the soils. It has various different names. Here's another story Jesus told. This is the wheat and the weeds. The kingdom of heaven is like a farmer who planted good seed in his field. But that night, as the worker slept, his enemy came and planted weeds among the wheat, then slipped away. When the crop began to grow and produce grain, the weeds also grew. The farmer's workers went to him and said, Sir, the field where you planted that good seed is full of weeds. Where did they come from? An enemy has done this, the farmer exclaimed. So we pull the weeds out, they asked. No, he replied. You'll uproot the wheat if you do. Let both grow together until the harvest. Then I will tell the harvesters to sort out the weeds, tie them into bundles, and burn them. So we do not need to worry about the end result. God's judgment will take care of that. What we need to focus on is two or threefold. One, we focus on the orthodox teaching of God's word. We focus on <coughs> the gathering of the congregation as the bride of Christ. And we seek all of those things in Acts 2.42. We sing songs of worship and praise. Sing songs and psalms that remind us of him and teach us about him. We go into his word so that we may know more about him and how to love him. How, what his expectations are. And then how that is reflected on us. We fellowship in godly fellowship with godly conversations, strengthening one another in all that we do. We break bread together, including the Lord's Supper, perform and share the ordinances together. All of this, all of it, everything that I just mentioned is to unify the body. Why does the body need unified? Well, notice where the weeds are planted in the kingdom. So everything, you know, the, <laughs> this is hard to say because the, the, the kingdom of God will not rot. The true kingdom of God, those whose lives are dependent upon their faith in Jesus Christ are absolutely secure. But the rot comes from the inside out. Satan takes the word of God. It always has been and always will be his greatest weapon. And changes it under the name of Christian or Christ. Because there is such power in the name of Christian or Christ. And so we look and we see, uh, that's not right. We look over here to this supposed Christian church. That's not right. We look over here to this supposed Christian church. You're actually preaching about people, right? And how people are awesome and they're even more awesome with God. Like that, that's not right. And it comes really from the inside out. We want to be distracted by media outlets showing all this wacky Christian stuff, supposed wacky Christian stuff. And there's nothing shocking about how the anti-Christian culture presses in against that and presses in against the church, orthodox or not. So we understand that we are growing with the weeds. Our focus must be on Christ, period. His word, submission to his Holy Spirit, the discernment that comes with that. We pray for the lost. We speak truth to the lost. We do all that we can, as Paul says, as much as it is practicable, you live in peace with all people. 
But that does not mean that we simply allow evil to destroy the image bearers of God or the children of God. That's Satan's ultimate goal. He'll destroy that soul in hell. He'll destroy that soul in the womb. He'll destroy that soul as <clears throat> that soul is reflecting Christ into the world. So you see that it's more nuanced of a conversation than good versus evil. It is this sort of relationship, this growth as we walk in the kingdom of God, <coughs> which is now and yet to come in its fulfillment. Let, let me go over here. Let me go to Luke 13. Three things in a row. Jesus said, what is the kingdom of God like? How can I illustrate it? It is like a tiny mustard seed that a man planted in a garden. It grows and becomes a tree and the birds make nests in its branches. That's very encouraging. Because our faith and faith alone, and we talk about this all the time on Turning on the Lights. Is your faith enough? Or do you, must you belong to some body of Christ where that teaches Faith is not enough. You must have faith plus demonstrations of God's Holy Spirit. You must have faith plus these words of knowledge. Faith plus whatever. Or is your faith enough? We learn here that the faith, small amount of faith, God will take, bless, and multiply. Yes, we, we are the wheat and non-believers are the weeds. And I'm saying that not all of them are antagonistic toward us, Rosie. And so the way that we react toward them is more nuanced than just boom, not them. No, absolutely. We are called to walk in this field, if you will, and share the good news with the weeds to continue the metaphor, the parable. And we know, according to the a uh, parable of the sower of the seeds that as we go through this field and we share the gospel with the weeds, some of it will be accepted and they will be transformed into wheat. So I'm just living within the parable here. We know that some will accept it and work with it and then the roots will go down and they will be transformed to wheat. We know that some will Think about it, want to accept it, but then something comes along and they say, no, this isn't right. I don't want this. And they reject it and they remain a weed. And we also know that two other things. We will share the gospel with some weeds and they will just stay weeds. We're like, yeah, okay, whatever. Eyes are closed. Ears are closed, whatever. And we also know the final tier, that the weeds will aggressively attack the wheat. And the question is, do we allow the weeds to aggressively attack the wheat? Can we uproot them at that time? And my discernment is yes. Right? Does what I'm about to do honor God, honor his image bearers? This is the honor God or honor his creation. And, and this is the gray area. There's no doubt about it and that every Christian needs to come to terms with their own self-defense and defense of other image bearers of God. When do we do that and when do we not? And my discernment is that the image bearer of God who is trying to destroy other image bearers of God is evil. And I will defend the defenseless or I will defend the image bearer of God or, of course, the child of God if they have been adopted into the family against their destruction by someone who has given themselves over to the evil one. So there you go. Deep discussion. And all of that is to say that we as human beings, it's quite natural for us. 
want to take something that is more nuanced and cut it down to yes or no, black or white. Right? It's like the conversation about trans women athletes. Well, that's the big gotcha question for any athlete that's st sitting at the podium, especially a woman athlete. Do you believe that trans women should participate in women's athletics? And you can't have a nuanced conversation. If you say yes, then all hell breaks loose on one side of the fence. If you say no, then all hell breaks loose on the other side of the fence. <coughs> when in reality, two things can be true at the same time. You can say, hey, United States of America, you can identify as a woman if you so choose. God bless you on your way. And I do mean that. God bless you. I hope that God blesses you and converts you, right? I hope that you see his light shining in the world and see the truth. So go on your way. But your natural biology is not that of a woman. And thus, your bone density, your muscle mass, all of those things give you a tremendous advantage over a genetic woman. So two things can be true at the same time. Go on your way and be a transgender person, but there are boundaries because of the realities of biological sex. Nobody wants to hear any of that. Because that doesn't make headlines. That, that makes sense. And so athlete after athlete, particularly, of course, women athletes and coaches, that's the question that some reporter has to make their name by asking. And the person knows that they're damned if they do and they're damned if they don't on how they respond. Because nobody wants to hear a, a rational response to that. So what I'm saying is that our relationship with evil is more nuanced than that. I have neighbors who are lost, not of the kingdom of God. I would love for them to be of the kingdom of God. I, they know what I believe. They know why I believe it. And I will share it and talk with it about, about it anytime they wish. They're not wicked in terms of wanting to hurt me, hurt the church, destroy God's image bearers or his children. But I also know people who absolutely are anti and very vehemently so. And would be more than willing to destroy the church, her people. So, you see the range there? We navigate these waters as believers by our faith in Christ and the discernment that the power of his Holy Spirit gives us. So we see that in Matthew 13, those two parables. We're casting the seed, right? We're casting the seed as we're living in the field. We're casting the seed as we're living in the field. Those two parables go hand in hand. And then we talk about the faith of the mustard seed. <clears throat> he also asked, what else in the, is the kingdom of God like? It is like the yeast a woman used in making bread. Even though she put only a little yeast in three measures of flour, it permeated every part of the dough. Faith and God's Holy Spirit. Boom. Faith, trust, and the power of God's Holy Spirit. Growing and empowering the kingdom of God on earth. Jesus went through the towns and villages teaching as he went, always pressing on toward Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few be saved? Now, this is a very interesting response. We're going to end with this because it makes it puts an exclamation point on everything that I have been teaching this morning. He replied, work hard to enter the narrow door to God's kingdom, for many will try to enter, but will fail. When the master of the house has locked the door, it will be too late. When the master of the house has locked the door, it will be too late. You will stand outside knocking and pleading, Lord, open the door for us. But he will reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Then you will say, but we ate and drank with you and you taught in our streets. And he will reply, I tell you, I don't know you or where you come from. Get away from me, all you who do evil. That's sobering. 
And it should be sobering for the Christian. And we should not sugarcoat that passage, nor should we neglect preaching that passage, probably on a weekly basis. Because it clearly indicates that we are engaged in verbs with Christ. We are walking in relationship with God through Jesus Christ. We have been drawn, as we have been sanctified, into the presence of a holy God, our holy God. We are able to draw close to the sun, S-O-N and S-U-N, right? Think of the analogy, we are, we are able to draw close to the sun, S-U-N, without fear of being burned because of the completed work in the cross. And we must be intentional. Notice what he says. Work hard to enter the narrow door. I don't think this means that you try to do all the religious things. I think I read this, and as I do read it in other translations, and then going back... <clears throat> be very intentional in your relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Don't treat him like anything other than he is. Our holy God, sovereign, redeemer, sustainer of his children. Go to his word with reverence and all. Go to him in prayer, in reverence and all, in fear of the Lord. Be very intentional about what you do and how you do it and what you say and how you say it. And as we navigate this world, it's not just as easy as, well, this, we're going to stay in this bunker and never engage the outside world, never engage evil on any level. Yes, you will. You do every time you step out your door as a follower of Christ. But we must learn from Jesus what this means. And how we must behave. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For you will see Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. And all the prophets in the kingdom of God. But you will be thrown out. And people will come from all over the world. From east and west, north and south. To take their places in the kingdom of God. And note this. Some who seem least important now. Will be the greatest then. And some who are the greatest now. Will be the least important then that is the encouragement, my brothers and sisters. I don't know how more, much more plainly or clearly it can be stated. A relationship is a living, active engagement between at least two parties. As you have repented and turned and submitted your life to Christ, you are in well indwelled by his Holy Spirit, you are thus engaged in a relationship with him. What does that mean to you? If we compare it to marriage, <clears throat> is it like getting married one day and then speaking to your spouse five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening for the next 30 years until you die? That's not much of a relationship. How good is your relationship with Christ? That will determine everything else moving forward. You need not worry about all of the weeds that are around you if you yourself actually are one. Father, we pray that this word may penetrate the hearts and the minds and the souls of all who will hear. We pray that your, the teaching of your word will reach out far and wide and people will learn and grow and become the disciples of Jesus that you know we all can be. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'm glad that it worked. Happy Friday for what it's worth on this day. I think they're showing The Chosen here tonight at seven, the first two episodes of season four. Not my bag, but if you're into it, come on. The doors are open. The church is clean and warm. And a good time will be had by all. So we will see you on Sunday for a very special day at Churchtown. But wherever you go, hey, go.